Welcome to the HJ Talks About Abuse podcast, the podcast where we talk about sexual abuse cases in the hope that it will assist listeners in openly discussing topics which have been ignored for too long. This podcast is brought to you by the abuse team at Hugh James. We are lawyers, so we tend to speak about the legal aspects of abuse cases, but we aren't too shy to speak up about the broader issues faced by survivors of sexual abuse too. We hope that you find it interesting, but more than that, if you are a survivor of sexual abuse, we hope that you find our discussion empowering. Hello and welcome to HJ Talks About Abuse, the podcast that we bring to you weekly. My name is Danielle Vincent and today I'm joined by my colleague Hannah. Hi Hannah. Hi Danny. hi listeners. So today we're going to be talking about a recent BBC headline, which is man posing as YouTube star jailed for global sex torsion. So I just want to say before we get into this, that there are obviously going to be some, there is a trigger warning here that we are going to be talking about sexual abuse, abuse online, blackmail and all things that sort of relate to that. So if this is going to cause you any distress or harm, please do switch off, but join us at a later date. So, yeah, Hannah, you came up with this podcast idea because there has been a lot in the press about this recently, hasn't there? Yeah, there's been a lot in the press about sextortion at the moment. And just to sort of clarify from the get go, for those listeners who don't know what sextortion is, um, it's the short name for financially motivated sexual extortion. And essentially, it's a type of online blackmail where criminals will threaten to share sexual pictures, videos or information about their victims. They may try to take money from them or force them to do something that they don't want to do. And anyone can be a victim of sextortion. However, Most victims are young people aged between 15 to 17 and also adults under the age of 30 are often most at risk of becoming victims to sextortion. So, yeah, unfortunately, there's been a lot in in the headlines recently. There's been a case in Australia that was in the news in August. So a man was posing as a YouTube star and was basically forcing young people to perform sexual acts on camera he's been jailed for 17 years last month there's also been a lot in the news this month in September for a UK gang well actually I think the gang originate in Nigeria but there's been a lot of sextortion targeting happening in the UK and they're called Yahoo Boys which has led to the suicide of three teenagers in the UK. So it's a really, really serious issue at the moment. Yeah, this is an incredibly sad turn of events. And, you know, we talk about on this podcast a lot about how things can turn almost from innocently chatting online, especially with with, with minors, to something that's more than that, which then turns to blackmail. We often see images being shared initially sometimes with somebody who you think is a friend or somebody your own age. And then all of a sudden you are being effectively extorted to either send money or there's a huge threat that this is going to be sent to your school or your family or your friends or any close loved one. Yeah, absolutely. And I mean, this is being described as a public health epidemic at the moment. And, you know, through research, I did actually see that CPS have put out some guidance on how we should recognise extortion happening, which I think is really important to know because I think the criminals involved in this are often often targeting people through social media apps. And I didn't really realise the scale of this. I mean, I think last month Meta actually released that they closed down 63,000 sextortion accounts across their apps. That's including apps such as Instagram and Facebook, just in the UK, I believe. So this is on an extreme scale. And I think it's really important that people are aware of, you know, looking out for the signs of sextortion. Often it can happen when someone you've just met online is trying to start a relationship with you very quickly, has sent friend requests to a lot of people, repeatedly asking you to do sexual things that you're not comfortable with, or very quickly into your relationship starting asking you to do sexual things or start sexual conversation and also telling you that they've hacked your account or have access to your contacts. So it's definitely something that we all need to be aware of. I think important to note is that they are often using a fake identity online as well. So these are sort of some of the common signs that should be looked out for. Yeah, I've seen also something similar as well that was broadly reported I think it was last year in India where another lady took her life because again she was being 
blackmailed online in regards to, I think she she was in debt and was asked to send a photo. And then she was then, th- these people were professionals. They then hacked all of her contacts and basically said, you know, if you don't pay us X amount of money, we're now going to send these images to all of your family. And yes, she's sadly committed suicide. So, you know, there's a, there's a terrible level here of, you know, wrongdoing and legalities and you know impacting individuals to the point that they're going to either attempt or commit suicide is just horrendous yeah absolutely i mean it's just so sad to think that these victims who are often young people really see no other way out and i think we should just make it so clear that there should be no shaming of victims it's absolutely and very clearly not their fault that someone's fretting to share you know those images of them And, you know, unfortunately, this is happening to a lot of people. So, you know, you're likely not alone if this has happened to you. And I think the techniques that these gangs are using, I've read that with the development of artificial intelligence, they're starting to use AI generated images to sort of trick people. And so there is absolutely no shame. I think, unfortunately, as technology advances, they are finding more sophisticated techniques to trap their victims. We often talk about this whenever we talk about any forms of social media, these types of platforms and use of AI is that, you know, technology is moving so quickly that the laws in this country and I imagine in most other countries just cannot keep up with it. You know, the the tech that there is these days, especially, you know, if anyone's listening to this who's a parent, for example, of a child, how do you keep up with this constant tech and these new websites and all the all the things that happen you know we often talk about in the office is a number of different generations about things like when snapchat all of a sudden it changes different features and some people in the office have no idea even what snapchat is perhaps and then you've got all these different technologies it, it really is a minefield and i think a lot is going to be having to be changed over the coming years to really protect society Yeah, absolutely. And I think as we've often said on many of our podcasts, the internet can be, you know, a great thing, but unfortunately it can also be quite a dangerous thing. And so it's definitely something that needs to be constantly reviewed to navigate how we can use it safely, particularly children. And it's important to say as well as as these things sort of pop up, there are definitely support lines out there so there's you know there's helplines as you you've pointed out in the the blurb that will go out with this podcast that there's the revenge porn helpline but also if your child there's child line there's the different sexual abuse centers around england and wales that you know if you need any form of support that they're there many many charities isn't there samaritans all different charities that you know if you're feeling alone when you're when something's happened that there are people that can support you and help and also if anything like this is happening not to you you know even hesitate about contacting the police because the police will have seen this before there's no as you say element to feeling ashamed or anything about this is that just to report it and hopefully that the police can help you Yeah, absolutely. I'd really encourage anyone who feels that they've fallen victim to this to to reach out and seek help because there is a lot of work, thankfully, being done on this. And unfortunately, you're likely not alone. And so it's definitely worth, as Danny said, reaching out to the police. Just looking at some statistics here, the Internet Watch Foundation has revealed that boys are the main targets and cases are on the increase. So in 2023, there was 176 young people targeted in the UK, which was an increase from 22 cases in 2022. So this is a, a really, really big issue at the moment. So please That's don't a huge feel any jump. shame. Yeah, it is. It's as I said, it's being described as a public health epidemic. So you know, there's definitely and a lot also, of work going on. We always say, you know, it's, it's definitely we're repeating ourselves here. Whenever we talk about statistics, this is only the statistics of people that have actually reported or disclosed. So in no doubt that this is going to be a much bigger proportion than what we're actually talking about, because quite often things happen and people don't disclose it, you know, or report it. So a huge, huge increase can only see that this is going to get much more of a problem. Yeah, absolutely. And it is, I guess, you know, one positive thing is seeing that Meta have been working on this. They have been closing down accounts. They are taking this really seriously. And so hopefully this will combat a lot of the criminals. 
Yeah, and hopefully there will be a big sort of media storm in regards to, you know, some of the big criminal sanctions that individuals get, because I think that's also very important, especially when younger people are looking at something and, you know, making sure that they realise that if they're charged with something like this, this is going to effectively change their life forever. You know, they're not going to get visas. They're not going to be able to work in certain industries. It's a real, real problem. Yeah, absolutely. Well, thank you, Hannah, for that. And as I say, there's a lot more blurb in regards to this podcast that will go out if you've got any questions on it or by all means do contact us or the team. And as always, we look forward to you joining us next week. So thank you, Hannah. Thanks, Annie. Thanks, listeners. That's bye from us. Thank you for listening to this episode of HJ Talks About Abuse. You can subscribe to our podcast on iTunes, Spotify, or your favorite podcast player. If you'd like to speak to us about something you've heard today, we'd love to hear from you. Email us at aboutabuse at hjtalks.co.uk.